Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. The last away game of the season is complete. Full time at Graven Cottage, Fulham 2, Crystal Palace 2. Very topsy-turvy game because it looked like we were getting three points, then one point, then no point, then back to one point again. And it was a very entertaining game out there today. You know, from the 3-0 defeat against Fulham on Boxing Day, where we had nine men, it looked awful under Vieira. It was a brilliant, clean game today. Few mistakes I'm going to point out, but first of all, let's get to a positive. So, the first 15 minutes of the game, it was all Fulham, really. You know, they dominated possession, could have scored, had a couple of opportunities, but the main one, corner floated in, headed away. 14 seconds between Fulham corner and our goal, due to one man, Eberé Eze. Dropped Harrison Reed like he wasn't even there. Slotted in Ed Odson Edward, who started over Wilfred Zaha due to his injury. And he took it like he's been playing all season. It was a brilliant finish into the top corner and made it 1-0 to Palace. And I wasn't expecting to get much from Fulham today because Fulham have been a really good side this season. I predicted them to go down and they're in the top half. So, you know, it's been a brilliant season from Fulham, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, Edward's goal was absolutely superb. Now, Tyrick Mitchell... I'm going to get on to him as a main talking point in a minute. But he, he just blatantly rugby tackles Harry Wilson in the box. And Mitrovic slams in the penalty for 1-1. Johnston couldn't do anything about it. It was a top-class penalty from a top-class striker this season. Um, you know, it was a brilliant penalty to make it 1-1 on a stroke of half-time, which was the which is the worst time to concede a goal. Second half, Fulham miss an absolute sitter with Mitrovic, funnily enough. And then... The, my main bugbear this season and last season has been set-piece defending. And we let one slip again. You know, crossing from Willian. Right, this is this is my argument, right? A lot of Palace fans are saying, A, it wasn't a foul. Well, it was. Because Tyrek Mitchell, stupid error again, pushing, um, I think it was Tete in the back, or it might have been Willian, pushing one of them in the back. And it's a free kick. And then, yes, the referee marks out where the free kick should have been taken. And William might have given himself a yard or two extra, you know, forward. But the amount of space we gave Mitrovic for that header, he could have crossed it from the crowd. Because I don't think we'd have got near Mitrovic. He had a free run for a player of his calibre and a player of his danger. What were we thinking? It's absolutely unforgivable again. That is one of the worst set-piece goals I've seen us concede since I've been doing this channel, really, just because of letting Mitrovic have the freedom of the penalty area. Schoolboy. Absolutely schoolboy. Maybe if the game was competitive, like more competitive, because it was more like a nothing game again, then, you know, we might have defended that better. But still, your Premier League players at the end of the day, you should be doing a better job than that. And then, look, we were the better team after that for quite a while. And then... There's a man in our squad that hasn't scored since February 2019, right? And who was our manager then? Roy Hodgson. Who scored, I hear you ask? Joel Ward. I've hardly spoken about this guy since I've been doing this channel. Joel Ward scored the equaliser. It was a really scrappy goal, I admit. Good save by Leno and then Ward, you know, makes up for his miss with a brilliant finish to make it 2-2. 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. And, um, yeah, it was just a brilliant to see Joel Ward score. I think it's going to be his final season. I don't know if his contract's running out yet, but let's be honest, he's been at the club for 10, 11 years now. He's fading away, but it was good to see him score for the first time in four years. He's probably the most unlikely goal scorer that we could have on the pitch, really. But, yeah, brilliant result. 2-2 two, two against a good Fulham side. But let's pick out... Three main talking points from Palace News and the game. Right, let's start with the game. Mitchell, right? I'm stick sticking by my point. Since the FA Cup semi-final last year, he's not been at his best. And what was he doing in April last year? He had an England call-up. Did that affect him? I think it has, right? Going forward, he's not very good. Defensively, he can be okay at times, but he makes... Rash decisions like bringing Wilson down in the box. Let him cut. If, if you're going to, you know, commit, don't commit. And worst case scenario, let Wilson cut inside and try and force Johnson into a save. 
at least then we might have had a chance of going in at half time one nil up and it would have been a completely different game from there on in. But no, Mitchell makes a very bad decision, brings him down penalty. Mitrovic ain't going to miss. Then he brings down Willian or Tete who, or whoever it was for the resulting free kick to go in. And if Mitchell was meant to mark Mitrovic, then he's at fault for that as well. You know, there's so many errors that there's a few errors now that Mitchell's made this season. But like I said in previous videos, in the past, we've come back to get something. And again, we did with Joel Ward's goal. Do you know what I mean? But no one's going to call him out. But we have to. He's our only left back. Priority, main priority, I'm going to stick by this in the summer window because we need to invest, is a backup left back or a better left back. Give Mitchell some competition, then he might start playing better. Because I've seen what Mitchell can do. But it's like, because he's the only left back in the squad, apart from Adaramola, who I don't think is ready to play yet. But as soon as, you know, Mitchell's the only left back, he's like, well, I'm going to get in the squad every week unless I'm suspended. And by the way, he got a red card against Fulham on Boxing Day. And his performance today wasn't great, I don't think. But that's the first talking point. Second talking point. Wilfred Zaha is ever closer to signing a contract worth 200 grand a week for four years. It will be the biggest wage that we have ever paid a player, you know, in our history. Now, like I said before, are we willing to spend that amount of money on him? I've worked it out. Yes, it would work out cheaper to keep Wilfred Zaha, pay 200 grand a week rather than replace him. But he's 30 years old. Opportunity cost here, lads. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know, do we persist with him? I don't know, because we've coped without him this season. We've coped. Do you know what I mean? You know, there's been games, let's, let's think think about this. Leicester at home, he went off at um, half-time. We even went 1-0 down, we still come back to win. Okay, all right, Leicester are a relegation threat inside. Leeds went there, went 1-0 down, come back to win 5-1 without Wilf. Southampton... Beat them 2-0 without Wilf. When Wolf comes back, we draw 0-0 at home to Everton. Lose 2-0 against Wolves. OK, he scores in a 4-3 win against West Ham. 1-0 loss against Spurs. Then, alright, it was a brilliant goal against Bournemouth, but then he gets, sent, he gets um, injured again. Two injuries since Roy has returned. Why are we persisting with this guy? We need to be brave and let him go. Like I said, we should have let him go ages ago. And that is my opinion. A second talking point. Third talking point. Roy Hodgson. Okay, right. So, um, what's that now? How many games is that? That is eight games, is it? Or nine games? Nine games. Five um, wins, two draws, two defeats. Out of a possible 27 points, that is 17. I think that's very, very good. I said when Roy Hodgson first come in that if he does a fantastic job, they may offer him a contract, but he's not going to take it, I said. He's going to take it. Next season, we're going to have Roy Hodgson, I think. But this is the worst part of it, right? People are saying that we're not going to progress as a club because Roy Hodgson has dealt with a lack of investment and still kept us up. But we've been in the Prem for 10 years now, 11 years nearly do you know what I mean? We cannot go for 11th to 15th finish. We're getting that this season. Do you know what I mean? We can't do it. We just cannot do it. And the worst part of it is, not only are we going to have Roy for another year, but the manager after that is going to be Paddy McCarthy. Because apparently we're using Roy's one-year deal to train Paddy McCarthy up. The decision-making he made against Arsenal when Vieira was sacked. He put Ward as right-back against Gabriel Martinelli. Put Luka Milivojevic in midfield against Thomas Partey, Martin Odegaard and Granit Xhaka. Absolutely terrible decision-making. And yeah, I know a year can do a lot, but there's basics. Do you know, do you know what I mean? So yeah, that I'm not too pleased about that. I don't know where we go from here on in. Yes, it's a good, decent result today. Yes, we've got one more game left. And I'm gutted that Nottingham Forest are staying up now because um, 
it would have made Sunday, next Sunday, a lot more entertaining. But now it's more of a nothing game again. It's going to probably be the least watched vlog ever on my channel because it doesn't mean a lot. But yeah, it means a lot that you guys watch it anyway. So, full time, 2-2. Two -two. It was a decent game, decent result. Glad Joel Ward scored. But it was just very, very bad decision making from Tyrick Mitchell in that game. I had to point him out and be harsh because he's done it a few times now. I had to do it. So, Joel Ward, I love you, lad. Honestly, him seeing him score was brilliant. Um, in other news, Manchester City have won the Premier League again. Is it is it a shock? Well, it is a shock to me because I said they'd finish second. Um, you know, Forest are staying up. Southampton are already relegated, so we're not making a video against them unless we get them in the cup again. Um, but then, you know, I think the three teams that could go down, there's two or three teams, Leicester, Leeds and Everton, they could go down. But, you know, we're talking about Palace here. 2-2, two, two, all done. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next Sunday for the last video vlog of the season, Palace versus Nottingham Forest. Goodbye, guys.